This is the O2ZR600 EFI. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. Once again, we got another project here. This is on the O2ZR600 Arctic Cat snowmobile. I recently put a top end on this and uh, did a few other things. And I was questioning whether or not the servo motor, which this thing has power valves. It's an electronic fuel injected sled and it starts off to where the valves are closed and that allows for low end torque and good throttle response off of idle. And what will happen is the power valves are operated by a servo and that motor will open up the valves when the engine reaches right around 7,000 RPMs and allows for better horsepower at higher RPMs above 7,000 you know, 7, and above. And then when you drop down below 7,000, it'll close again, giving you that low end. So my on my... 2002 ZR800 cross country. It's a carbureted model. Well, when I start that up, the servo motor has a self-diagnosing test and what they also consider a cleaning test. So the valves will open all the way when you first start the sled up and that's supposed to scrape any built up carbon off of the valves and then that drops down into the exhaust port, gets pushed out and it also allows the CDI box to test and monitor the voltage being used by the servo motor or being supplied to the servo motor. I'm not 100% sure on that, but either way, it does determine whether or not it has the proper voltage. And if it does have the proper voltage, then it'll only the servo motor will only cycle go around one time and then it'll close the valves back up. But if it detects if the CDI box detects an abnormal voltage, whether it be high or low, it will open up two more times trying to see if if there was an error in the reporting or the monitoring of that voltage and if it doesn't if it's not corrected within those two more cycles for a total of three the power valves won't work so what i noticed on this this o2 zr600 efi was that it doesn't cycle initially but it's an electronic fuel injected sled so i started asking around and come to find out that yeah the efi sleds do what everybody at least concurs that the EFI sleds do not cycle when they're started up. Just because you have the computer monitoring it, blah, 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 the computer knows. Now, I did notice that while doing the second heat cycle, I was able to rev the engine up on the stand a little bit higher, therefore allowing the servo motor to activate and open the power valves. I wasn't completely sure that it was operating properly, but... Either way, I wanted to go ahead and do the tests on it. Um, there are two tests that you can do, and hopefully you guys will find a little bit of good information on this resource here. Uh, just wanted to show you that process today. We're going to go ahead and go over to the sled, and then we're going to disconnect the connector to the servo, and then we're going to perform this potentiometer test just to make sure that we have the right reading, and then... Uh, we won't have to worry about that. Everything should be working in uh, proper order. We're going to go ahead and test the servo motor and go from there. We are testing to make sure the servo motor itself works. 
The servo motor is what turns the pulley here. This is where your power valves connect to, your cables. And when your sled hits 7,000 RPMs roughly, it will open, it'll turn to the right and open up the power valves until you re release the throttle and your RPMs go back down to below 7,000 and then it lets the power valves close back up. So um, there's two things you need to test. You wanna test this motor to see if it turns at all. So it's pretty simple. You just get yourself a 12 volt battery and you obviously hook, you can use some simple little alligator clip leads um, like I have here and you connect one to the negative terminal and one to the positive terminal. And then what you wanna do is go ahead and connect your negative terminal to, you have two wires here on your plug. You got a black wire with a red stripe and you have a red wire with a black stripe. I mean, honestly, it doesn't really matter which one you start with, but I just connect the black lead or negative terminal alligator clip to the black, to the black wire with red stripe terminal. And then the other one you can just touch to your red wire with a black stripe terminal and it should turn, okay? And then you want to switch the polarity of those connections. So I took the black or the negative alligator clip from the battery and pulled it off the black wire with a red stripe and put it on the red wire with a black stripe. And then just touch your positive alligator terminal to the black wire with red stripe terminal and it should spin the other way. So that's your first test complete. So we know that the motor itself is good. Now the second test that you wanna perform is for the potentiometer, which is back here. What this does is it determines the position of the actual motor itself or the pulley. And this is where your pulley is typically gonna sit when it's on the sled and it's connected up to the power valves, everything's ready to operate fully functional. So what you wanna do is you want to take a multimeter and set it, take a multimeter and set it to ohms. I have a Klein Tool CL2000 and I have it set to ohms. Now what you wanna do is you wanna take your red lead and connect it to the black and white terminal on the servo plug itself. So I'm just gonna go ahead and connect my alligator clip here. And then I'm gonna connect it to the black and white wire terminal. It's kinda of hard to see there. So those are those little terminals down there. Just connect it right up. And then you take your black lead from the multimeter, connect it to the other alligator clip. And then what you wanna do is connect the other lead to the yellow wire terminal. So you have your red, you have your red terminal connected to the black and white you have your black terminal from the multimeter connected to the yellow. Now what you want to do, you'll see if it's good, you'll see that, well, it may not even be if it's bad, or I mean if it's good, you're still going to get a reading initially. It will show, it should show something. Some of them are bad, they don't. So what you want to do is go ahead and start turning your pulley on the mo servo motor counterclockwise. This is clockwise, counterclockwise obviously. So what we're looking for is we're looking for a raise in ohms up to 4,700 ohms to 5,000 ohms, roughly. And then there's going to be a break 
and it's going to go open. You're not going to see any ohm readings. And then it's going to start over roughly from zero and then climb back up. So right there, we're at like 55. Goes open. Note the orientation of these two here, as well as where your pulley is, where the connectors for your cables are. So the openings are at the bottom at this point. So you keep turning it, it's still open, and it should go back to zero in a little bit more of a turn. There we go. So you only have, it's not even 90 degrees. Um, I would say it's maybe 50 or 60 degrees that is an open area. So then you keep turning, it'll slowly climb. That was just a switch over. So we're at 2000. Now we're at 3.9, that's 4,300, 48, 53, and then we're just about back again to the same spot where it's going to open up. There we go, opens up. So that's how you know that your, your servo motor and its potentiometer are good. Now I'll show you an example of a bad one. I mean, it's pretty cut and dry. This is one that I received with some parts. Uh, this wasn't one of my parts, guys. So this is just, I was actually given this one for free. The owner didn't know if it was good or bad. They just threw it in. No big deal, but we're gonna go ahead and connect this one up as well. So we're gonna go to the red terminal again. This so red terminal is gonna go to the black wire with a white stripe. And then this white alligator clip goes to the black terminal on the, Multimeter, connect that to your yellow wire terminal. So we're at the bottom. So we may we may suspect at first that, okay, it's at the opening portion. Now, I've already tested this one. This one is not good. Um, I mean, unless it's going to throw a curveball at me, but <laughs> we'll see. It shouldn't be. So if you want to keep turning it, we should be getting to the spot where it opens up or no, where it closes back up and you get... Some really low ohm readings, nothing yet. It should have by now. So it's looking like this one is bad. So we have a completely open connection here and there should be, like I said, a raise in ohms from zero to around 5,000 and then it opens up, starts at zero again, it goes back if you're turning counterclockwise. So, all right guys, but that's the, that's the test there. Hope that's helped some of you guys out.
I feel so stupid. I so I'm adjusting the power valve cables again. Uh, computers work. I still see it's like still bogging at like six grand and above. And so I'm like, what the heck is going on? So I'm looking at the documentation on how to adjust the power valves, and something hit me. I thought that you were supposed to put the power the valves in to where the concave end of the valve is goes up to the piston like you know like it's it's concave like like this up against up against the like the cylinder but that's that's wrong they're supposed to it, the convex portion is supposed to be for the exhaust port and you know this is my first time with these so i didn't realize that so that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go ahead and flip these things over because I'm still getting, it's like still boggy at like six a grand and above, even when the power valve's open. And yeah, I confirmed they're actually opening up now. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and get these things flipped around and start this thing up. And I guarantee this thing's going to scream now. But oh my gosh, yeah. So let's get this done. Son of a gun. They were zoomed backwards. I cannot believe I did this. But hey. Everything happens for a reason, right? So. They don't go in like this. They go in like this. What a buffoon. There we go. Son of a gun. I bet this thing's gonna scream. I'm, I'm excited now. It's like I just rebuilt the whole thing all over again. When in doubt, go back to the manual, folks. The manual has the answers. They all have the answers. And you know what? I don't even mind if you guys laugh. Stupid mistake, I know. But you know what? I learned. I learned something. Have any of you guys ever put these valves in backwards? Put down in the comments. Let me know. And wh what was your experience? How'd you figure it out? And like I said, this is my first experience with this type of power valve. I've only done the other ones. And I've only done one sled with the other ones. I was looking into um, the pressure operated valves. Have any of you guys ever used those? There's a couple companies that make them. STM is what I'm gathering as one of them that does, so. Oh, look at this. What a stinking joke. All right. So, I thought they were going in like this. But they go in like this, folks. Come on, baby. There we go. Oh, I'm going to clean this out, too.
And what's weird is I could have swore that I took them out and they were the uh, they were installed the other way. And then it didn't even hit me to look at the to like I don't know, I'm an idiot. <laughs> That's all there is to it. <laughs> but I learned, like I said, yeah. It happens. Live and learn. That's the that's the thing. Don't worry about it. If you're not living and learning, you're stagnant. You gotta learn till the day you die. Learn till the day you can't. Two. There we go. It's the moment of truth, folks. Man, they feel like they even move better. Look out. What did I say, seven last time? There we go. All right, folks, moment of truth. All right, let's open the garage up. And I know this thing's moving. Oh, I'm about to readjust the cables. Let's get that done. Really need to give me some better lighting for video recording. 1.26. Yeah, this one's a 1.28. Get yourself 10 millimeter and 5 sixteenths. Cable popped out of here. Looks good to me, folks. Might end up getting new cables before long. Yeah. Just a hair short. All right, folks. You guys ready? Oh my gosh. All right, that is it. All right, let's open up the doors first. All right, you guys ready? Here it comes.
If you're not subscribed to the channel and you found this kind of stuff useful, please subscribe, hit the alert bell, drop in, say hello, give some tips, and definitely share with friends and family on social media, networking, stuff like that. All right, guys, thanks a lot. We'll see you in the next video. So come on back. Take care. God bless.